Um, so I'm working in locally relevant corn herbicide management options, um, mostly so we can rotate to either dry bean or sugar beet. One of the bigger problems in our area is uh, our soils. We have a high pH, we have low organic matter, and that allows our um, traditional corn herbicides like atrazine, um, uh, callisto balance to stay in our soils into the next cropping season and um, ultimately injure our next cropping or rotational crops. So what I'm doing is kind of picking and choosing some corn herbicides, some pre-emergent herbicides, some post-emergent herbicides that um, allow rotation to dry bean and sugar beet. They're labeled for that. Um, another problem we have here is we're seeing a lot of resistance, uh, weed resistance to the, the herbicide Roundup. Um, glyphosate resistant kochia has been documented in Colorado, it's been documented in Kansas, Nebraska, and I believe Montana. There are a few other um, weeds that have become resistant as well, um, some water hemp, uh, pigweed species, Italian ryegrass. So it's a real problem. We want to be really proactive. And uh, the way to deal with that is to uh, rotate herbicides or use different modes of actions. Um, so that's, that's another component of the study that we're, that we're going to try to incorporate is using multiple modes of action so that we can um, combat this herbicide resistant weed problem we're having. So now that I've said that we've, we've had a lot of different um, herbicides going into this program now, uh, we're talking about a really big price. So another part of the study is going to look at the economic viability um, of these studies. We don't want to throw four, five, six different herbicides in in one treatment and cause $125 an acre. So we've got to keep our costs down um, so it's economically viable. We want to use different modes of action so that we can um, prevent this herbicide resistant weeds from um, developing here or creeping in on us from other states. And we want to, of course, uh, be able to rotate to um, either dry bean or sugar beet. You still got a minute left. If you want to say anything. Oh. And who are you? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm Jared Umberside. I'm a graduate student uh, under Andrew Kinnis in the uh, plant science department. Um, so basically, I've got I've got three different studies here. Um, I've got um, a one looking at pre-emergent herbicide, followed by a post-emergent herbicide later. Uh, a bunch of different combinations there. I've also got a one-pass uh, look at the, the same study. A lot of growers around the area aren't going to have time to get through their field and spray it twice. So we want to look at a tank mix for our early post-emergence and um, be able to just go through the field at one, uh, just once. And then I'm also, which is what is behind me here, um, I'm looking at a sweet corn, sweet corn herbicides. There's a lot of different um, cultivars of sweet corn or varieties of sweet corn. They all have different sensitivities to the, the different herbicides we want to use. And consequently, um, they're not labeled. The regular corn herbicides aren't going to be labeled for sweet corn. Uh, so we're really tied, uh, we have our hands tied behind our back when we're choosing these um, types of herbicides for sweet corn. So um, it's, it's becoming a real challenge for the area, but I, I really think it's going to be beneficial once we can, um, once we can finish up the study.